So uh, welcome to this video where we are looking at the optimization of transportation solutions. So, uh, so far we have looked at uh, the three methods of solving transportation problems, the Northwest corner cell method, the least cost cell method, and the Vogel's approximation method. So once you get a solution using any of those methods, you are supposed to check whether the solution is optimal. And there are two methods for doing that. We have the modified distribution method and the stepping stone method. So if you are given a, a fresh problem and you need to solve it and check whether the problem is uh, optimal, there are two phases. The first phase is what you have already covered, that is obtaining the initial solution. Then the next phase will be to check whether or to test whether the solution is optimal using any of the methods that we've discussed up there. So I want us to look at the problem that we have just solved up there using the Vogel's approximation method. And this is the solution that we obtained using that method. So once you get uh, your solution, the initial solution, you need to label your rows, you need to label your rows as UIs, and then you label your columns as VJs, okay? So in this case, we have row one as U1, row two as U2, then we have U3, U4. Then you have V1 for column one, V2 and V3. And then you do two things. So you notice that in the cost matrix, there are two types of cells. We have occupied cells like this and occupied or allocated cells like this one and this one this one, this one, this one, this one. So we have those six allocated cells. Then we have unallocated cells like here, where we are transporting zero units here. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So for those two cell, two types of cells, we're going to do two things. Huh? We do this first. For the allocated cells, we do this. We find the value of the UI plus Vj corresponding to that cell. So you take Ui plus Vj should be equal to Cij, where Cij is the cost of that particular allocated cell. For example, this is cell one. Uh, this is cell one one, meaning it is cell from row one to column one or from source one to destination one. So this would be C one one and this, C11 is the number, is the value two. So this value seven here is C12. This is C13. This is C21, C22, and so on and so forth. So for all the allocated cells, and there are six of them, we do this. So for this cell here, we are going to have U1. The, this cell here corresponds to U1 and V1. So you're going to have U1 plus V1 is equal to two, where this two is this number here. And for the next cell, this is a uh, uh, U1 plus V2 is equal to V7. We are done with row one, we come here. So this is U2 plus V3 is equal to one. Then here, this is U3 plus V2 is equal to four. And for the last row, we say we have uh, two values there. So we have U4, this one is U4 plus V1 is equal to one. And then this is U4 plus V3 is equal to two. So we need to solve these equations and get the values of U1, U2, and U3, uh, all the way to U4. Then for the unallocated cells, we do this. For the unallocated cells, we compute what we call cell evaluations. We obtain what we call cell evaluations. Cell evaluations are usually denoted as CIJs. Of course, the I represents the row number and the J represents the column number. And the DIJs are given by this formula. The cost corresponding to that cell minus UI plus VJ, where UI, this is the, these are the values that we got earlier on. Uh, the US and the VJs are the values that we obtain here. So we do that for all the unallocated cells. For example, in our case, the first unallocated cell is this one here, which is in row one, column three. So this is D13, D13. 
and the cost in that cell, the cost in that cell, the cost in that cell is, the cost in this cell is four, then minus U1 plus V3. The next unallocated cell is here, which is row one, I mean row two, column one. So this is D21. And the cost there is three minus u2 plus v1 you can see this corresponds to u2 and v1 and we do that for all the cells up to the last one here which is d42 which would be 6 minus uh, u4 plus v2 so we need to get the values of ui's and the vj's by solving the equations given here sometimes it may not be straightforward how you solve them so this is what we this is how we proceed. You check the row, you identify the row or column with the highest number of allocations. Like this row here has two allocations, this one and this one. This row here has one allocation. This row has one allocation. This row has two allocations. So we have two rows with two allocations. We also do the same for columns. This column has two allocations. This column has two allocations. This column has two allocations. So the highest number of allocations is two and it is appearing in two rows and also in three columns. So in any one of them, we just choose one of them. If there's a tie like in our case, you just choose one of them and you set that either UI or VJ, you set it zero. For example, in this case, I will choose row one and assign it zero randomly. So I'll say U1 is zero. I could as well have said, u4 is zero, or v1 is zero, or v2 is zero, or v3 is zero, because they are tying. They all have the same number of allocations, the highest number of allocations. So I just choose one of them, and I'm choosing u1 is equal to zero. Then once I choose u1 is equal to zero, I use that one to solve the equations. I use that one to solve the equations. So let's get started here. So if I set this one to zero, it means that v, V1 is equal to two. It means that V1 is two. So I can come here and say this is two. Okay, so I've also said this is zero. So it means that V2 is seven. So this is seven. I want to solve all of them. Then we have U2 and V3, we don't. What about U3 and V2? We already have V2 is seven. So if this is seven, we're saying this guy is seven now. So this is seven. So if this is seven, it means that your U3 is four minus seven, which is minus three. So this is minus three. Write all of them so that you don't uh, lose track of what is happening. Okay, then we go to the next one. U4 plus V1. We already have V1 is equal to two. So this is a two. So if this is a two, it means that your U4 is one minus two, which is a minus one. So this is a minus one. Then, uh, U4, we have U4. So if I put minus one here, it means that my V3 is a three. Okay, so this is a three. So I'm remaining with U2 only. So I've already gotten V3 somewhere. So this is V3. So if I put here a three, it means that my U2 is one minus three, which is minus two. So this is minus two. So those are the values of UIs and VJs. I need to use those ones here. I need to use those values. Uh, let me make it slightly smaller. I want to use these values in these equations so that I can get the values of DIJs. The values of DIJs are the ones that I'll use to tell me whether my solution is optimal or not. So uh, let's work it out. Okay, so once we 
compute the cell evaluations. This is what we obtain that D13 is one, D21 is a three, D22 is a minus two, and so on and so forth. So what can happen with the DIJs is that they can be positive, they can be negative, or they can be zero. So these are the values that you use to check if your solution is optimal or not. And this is the criteria for optimality. If all the DIJs are positive numbers, that is if all the DIJs are, are greater than zero, the solution is optimal and unique. That means you only have one solution for that problem. You only have one optimal solution for that problem. If all the DIJs are equal to zero, then the solution is optimal, but an alternative solution exists. That means you can have multiple optimal solutions. Finally, if at least one DIJ is negative, if at least one of them is negative, then your solution is not optimal your solution is not optimal. So if your solution is not optimal, you are supposed to optimize it. So if you look at our values of DIJs, we have a value here, which is not negative. So that means our solution is not optimal, meaning that the cost that we got using the Vogel's approximation is not the best cost. We could lower it. If it happens that you have several values here with negative values, if you have several negative values, you identify the most negative, the most negative cell. Like in this case, the negative value, the negative value is uh, cell 22. So we are going to do something to this cell. If there were several cells with negative values, you pick the one with the biggest negative. Like if there was a minus seven, would work with the cell that gave us that negative. So in this case, the cell of interest is the one that gave us this, so D22. So we go back to our problem and identify our D22. And we mark that cell for allocation. We mark that cell for allocation like that. So we need to allocate, we need to transport some items here. We need to transport some items there. So what you do from this cell, we draw a closed loop. We draw a closed loop, which comprises of a series of horizontal and vertical lines. And we draw it in such a way that the corner cells are occupied cells. We draw it in such a way that the corner cells are occupied. I hope this is possible in our case here. So we need to draw a series of straight lines starting from this cell and then mm. back to the same cell in such a way that the corner cells are occupied. Okay, so let's see how that one can happen. So, we have just seen that if you are starting from here, we need to form a closed loop. That means we need to draw a series of horizontal and vertical lines from this cell and back to the same cell. We draw the lines in such a way that all the corners, all the corners contain occupied cells. Like this is a corner. So we're going to have this our first horizontal line. This is a corner cell, which is occupied like this. The corner cell must be occupied cell. We come here, we go up here, we come here, back to the same place. So that's a closed loop. If you revisit our earlier notes, we were talking about independent allocations and non-independent allocations. Okay, so here we are able to form a closed loop from this cell. So now, then after you, do, you draw the closed loop, uh, loop, you assign plus minus in alternating way. So you, are, you assign this place a plus, meaning that I want to transport some items there. I want to add something there. I want to minus something there. So you add plus minus in alternating ways, huh? plus minus, plus minus, 
plus and minus and then plus. So you, you assign plus minus like that. Then out of the cells that you indicated minus, like this is a minus, this is a minus, this is a minus. Out of the cells that you've indicated minus, you identify the smallest. So we identify the smallest minus. So this mi the smallest minus here corresponds to two. So minus two, because the other one is be minus eight. Okay, and this is minus four. So we pick minus two. And what you do with that minus two, you minus two everywhere. At every corner cell, you minus two. Um, and then where there is a minus, sorry, you minus two. And where there is a plus, you add two. So you're going to minus two. Here we add two. Minus two here. Here we add two. We minus two here. Here we, uh, we add two. So we do that alternating. So that means that in this first cell here, this first cell here, here we're going to minus a two. Then here we're going to plus a two. I'm writing it inside there. So initially there was nothing to transport there, but now I'm saying we're going to transport two. Here we were transporting two, I'm saying minus two. That means you're going to transport nothing here. Then here we minus two. So instead of eight, we transport six. Here we add two. So instead of 10, we transport 12. Here we minus two. So instead of four, we transport two. And here we, here we add two. We add two, let me use different color. So these are, so you notice that even with those new reallocations, my row requirements is still met because this is now three plus two is five. This is now two plus a six, which will give me that. So now I have a new cell here, which was initially empty. So I need now to change my plan and transport to this place. And then I check if my solution could be optimal. So that's what we're going to do here. I want to copy this table now with the new assignments, uh, with the new allocations. And then I recalculate my values of UIs and VIs. I, I recalculate all that and my DIJs. Then I check whether the, whether the conditions are satisfied, okay? And I'm going to repeat that process until all the DIJs are either equal to zero or they are positive. So that process will repeat itself until these conditions are satisfied. One and two are satisfied. So I think uh, because of time, we're going to stop there. So we are supposed to copy this table and bring it down here with the now the new uh, uh, allocations. Then you recalculate the UIs and VIs just like we did here earlier. And once you do that, you'll end up with the best solution. So let's stop there. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your cooperation.